I wanted to do the first reading in honor of our artist today is Franz Marx's Blue Horses by Mary Oliver. I step into the painting of the four blue horses. I am not even surprised that I can do this. One of the horses walks toward me. His blue nose noses me lightly. I put my arm over his blue mane, not holding on, just commingling. He allows me my pleasure. Franz Marc died a young man, shrapnel in his brain. I would rather die than explain to the blue horses what war is. They would either faint in horror or simply find it impossible to believe. I do not know how to thank you, Franz Marc. Maybe our world will grow kinder eventually. Maybe the desire to make something beautiful is the peace of God that is inside each of us. Now, all four horses have come closer, are bending their faces toward me, as if they have secrets to tell. I don't expect them to speak, and they don't. If being so beautiful isn't enough, what could they possibly say? So that was a pretty good discovery. I thought I liked that one. So, um, reading too. For those of us who live with artists or are with art a lot, sometimes you feel a little bit like, wow, what am I? Who am I? You know, I can't do that. I don't have that. And so this is for all of us who feel that way a little bit. <laughs> and it's called So by Leonard Nathan. So you aren't Tolstoy of St. Francis or even a well-known singer of popular songs, and you'll never read Greek or speak, speak French fluently. You'll never see something no one else has seen before through a lens or with the naked eye. You've been given just the one life in this world that matters and upon which every other life somehow depends as long as you live. And also given the costly gifts of hunger, choice, and pain with which to raise a modest shrine to meaning. Uh, program for today. How many of you have seen the Art Alley in downtown Bismarck? How many have been there? If you haven't, it is worth a special trip. There's plenty of things to eat and drink all around it, so that makes it really nice. Um, but it is just this beautiful jewel, not so hidden, but it just, it just brightens everything. And both Molly and Paul are um, vital to this effort, and as well as many other artistic efforts. Um, Molly is an advocate artist and educator raised in Valley City. I'm proud to call her a friend as well. She lives in Bismarck, works for the Farmer Un Farmers Union. Um, she's active in the arts world. She's involved in creative projects. She loves people, mosaics, and good jokes. This is all true. She serves on many boards and, um, and loves being around people where she can creatively collaborate and share ideas. Um, she strives for opportunities to empower others to find their voice and creative calling. And she is an effervescent joy in my life and the lives of many others. Um, so I am proud to know her. Now, Paul is less effervescent, but no less a joy. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> Paul is a, um, has a BFA from the University of North Dakota and an MFA from Brooklyn College in New York. And he grew up in the Valley City, Marion area of North Dakota. Um, and he served on with, has worked with the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, the North Dakota Museum of Art in Grand Forks. And he is a high school head of the visual arts department at Bismarck High School, working with high school students regularly, including in the art alley, I know there's all kinds of contributions that have come from students. He's a really key influence there. He also is one of the founding members of the Bismarck Downtown Artist Cooperative, which is a wonderful um, community and um, cooperative art group. Um, and I like this. I'm not going to read the whole artist statement because you want to hear from them. But I have spent the last 10 years reflecting on my art and looking at new directions. Where do we come from? What are we and where are we going? In those 10 years, my art's become a mix of styles, moods, and was in a state of flux, meditations, my family environment, and the inner self become a focus in the pieces. So I will let Molly and Paul tell you more about art and this community and how it brings us all together. Thank you. Um, I'm really honored to be here. Uh, I love the UU community and I know many of you and uh, thanks for the introduction, Marnie. I'm honored to uh, be a friend of yours and your families. Um, in thinking about how to talk about uh, the art alley and art in general, I guess I'll tell you a bit of a story. Um, I really think art is all about community, and I brought a PowerPoint, so I kind of feel like I'm teaching a class up here, but that's not my intent. I'm a visual person, and I'm so happy that many of you have been uh, to the art alley because I think it's such a wonderful addition, um, if you want to click through. 
that is, uh, I was fortunate to um, submit a um, proposal that was accepted to add to the art alley. And uh, I learned the art of mosaics through uh, mosaic artists in Minneapolis. And again, it was all about community, my process in that. This, uh, those gals up there, and you know Aruna, uh, I'm sure she's a member of this congregation. And uh, we all created this together and installed it. I want to start where uh, my journey began with uh, community and public art and realizing the impact that it has on communities. I was living in Minneapolis, uh, I believe it was 2010 to 2012 maybe, and I started working with uh, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, which was in my neighborhood. Neighborhood. I lived off Lake Street in South Minneapolis, and it's a nice uh, neighborhood, and um, some parts of it are rough, too. And it's a largely Latino neighborhood. Um, so at St. Paul's Lutheran Church, um, we, I worked uh, within um, the community there to do a project called semilla. And semilla in Spanish literally means seed. And so what we did was we created in the basement of this church with all sorts of uh, folks these mandalas. So people would come up with uh, visions and ideas in how they wanted to shape and change their community and would design a, a circular mandala and then create it. So we were all learning mosaics at the same time, and it was literally like a quilting bee because we were all sitting around this table, only it was a mosaicing bee. And then that is an extension of um, this, this project, Samia. You can see the round mandalas uh, peppered in there. And then I worked with a couple of lead artists to install this on the Hans Christian Andersen School, so not far from there. And we just involved an enormous amount of kids. And so this was really my, uh, my deep dive into seeing how art can impact a community and how uh, people at really, I think what rings true uh, through all of my projects is uh, Picasso in the back of my head saying, everyone's an artist, everyone's an artist, because people were just coming to this and learning this and then doing it and running with it. So that was really fun. This was the first art alley I was involved in. This was in the back of St. Paul's uh, Lutheran Church. I worked with uh, a program, I was employed by a program through that church called Young Leaders, and uh, we learned about different skills to be employable, and so to <laughs> whatever that means. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, you know, Todd, we, we went all over and um, learned about how to create resumes and do this, and how to create art in your community and build community. So this was on the back of the church. And then uh, my husband Aaron and I were in Minneapolis not too long ago uh, visiting that old neighborhood. And uh, we were coming down the street, and I said, hey, quick, take a left in here. And because that was where that previous, that wave mosaic was. And this is what it's grown into. So it's so uh, wonderful to just see the community continuing to teach their members uh, this art. You know, and it, it really began with, like, two folks, one lead artist uh, being in that congregation and then just growing it. So they've just, like, totally painted the town. And all about uh, community, you know. Go ahead. This is another, uh, and I guess I'm just explaining my journey because um, it's really impacted me, and I hope, my hope is that it'll impact uh, the communities that I'm in and that I can share what I've learned and those gifts that I've been um, fortunate to uh, take in. This, I worked in kind of like a, it was like working in a factory. Uh, I'd never worked in a factory before, but this was a factory of artists, and this again was in the cities. And under the same lead artist, we uh, took small tesserae, and we had this big um, TV underneath a clear table that they rigged up, and then they had created this computer program to pixelate this. So go on. And um, that was the result. So that was just another experience where, um, you know, I had no idea what we were even totally doing, but just uh, jumped into this community of artists, and I was taught. So I feel like there's such a, um, an importance in 
uh, just teaching others, and that's what I was given. This was a uh, mural and mosaic I did in Langdon School, up, so up by the Canadian border, with uh, kids first grade through sixth grade. I graduated with a gal from college who now teaches up there. And it's just so neat to watch, whether it's children or adults, walk by something that they've helped create and say, I did that. And so I just, I think that's really empowering and one thing I love about art. This is really funny, um, but I wanted to note that I think public art has such a uh, impact on folks. This was a kid, I think, like maybe a third through fifth grader, and this was at a Nelson County Park uh, school, or it was an art camp in the summer, but you can see that's a city, and then if you know the, um, the big fork in Minneapolis, <laughs> so that was part of the landscape, and I just came across this, and I thought, oh, that's so great. So. Anyway, I think it leaves a big impact. And uh, this is the, the project in the art alley, and I was so grateful and fortunate um, to have folks that wanted to come and contribute and learn. Um, this was in my uh, apartment, turned it into a um, studio for a while, and we all came together like that quilting bee and just pieced. And some folks had done mosaics before, some folks had not, and it was really neat to see it grow because as I would post photos on Facebook, people would message me, hey, can I come get involved? And I was like, yes, please. So that was really fun. And then um, I, I love this picture because that's uh, a friend's daughter and just the joy. And then also my husband helped too, which was really nice. So <laughs> thanks, Aaron. But that's a bunch of us. And Laura, who's to the right next to it, um, I had seen her in the park. It was a community, I think it was Harmony Fest. And I had mentioned I was going to do this project. And she said, oh, can I come watch? And I said, no. You have to come help. <laughs> so go ahead. And uh, we just we really uh, installed it together. And that's just such a um, fun thing for me to be part of a, a community and um, teach folks to and see them uh, become empowered through what they're creating. That's Aruna. <laughs> Nobody's having any fun, but <laughs> go ahead. I think there's one more. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess that's, that's a little bit about my process. Nope, that's, um, that's there. There you go. <laughs> but that's a little bit about my process, and um, uh, just I do find a lot of joy, and I really I do feel that everyone is an artist, and um, I've found that uh, creating art with community just is such a fun thing. So um, I'll do a little plug here. Uh, there's a couple of other projects that um, myself and the folks, some of these gals and other folks that want to be involved are excited to create um, for an arts park in Jamestown. We're actually doing a few mosaic benches and I've moved into the Harvest Brazilian Grills basement, just my studio. And <laughs> I haven't actually moved down there. But um, <laughs> But so I would invite you, um, t if you'd like to be part of that, please uh, friend me on Facebook or um, if folks here, if you see a, a blurb, um, I invite you to be a part of that. It's really fun. So thank you so much for having me here. I, I do teach at Bismarck High School. Um, I have been there for 21 years. So um, as an art teacher, change probably what I'm doing within 20 minutes just because I'm that kind of person. Um, also, as far as curriculum, I spice it up every year. I really do not want to be set in something year after year after year because um, it's just a matter of keeping myself fresh and new. Um, I tell you what, this art alley was a, it was a, it's hard to describe, actually. Um, you know, as part of almost being part of the um, embodiment of it, transcending it, um, an addiction. <laughs> um, those are some of the words. And I still, actually, when I finished it, ironically, um, there's a lot of symbolism in the whole experience um, coming up with my design changing my design, um, working with um, all kinds of people 
um, the committee, um, visitors. Um, so it was just, I mean, I should probably write a book about it. Um, where'd I start? I'll start with this since this is the first slide. Actually, this was submitted probably the 11th hour that it was due because I really wanted kids to be involved in this project because um, graffiti, if you know anything about graffiti or street art, graffiti art was started by kids. It was a, it was a teenage punk, if you want to call them that, um, a teenage movement. And so I really wanted kids to be involved in it because that's the heart of the whole thing. So I submitted this design on behalf of my students. I had no idea if I was even going to get any students to work on it. Um, and I really looked at it, it's like, how could, I, how could I get my students involved or how could I connect them even more to what we were doing? So I looked at our BHS Hall of Fame. Um, I looked at well-known well -known people, they're all well-known because they're in it, but I looked maybe why, why they made an impact um, to our school, the community, or even the world. So then I narrowed it down to maybe 10 of them. So then I just said, you know what? They're all going to be passed away because I think that's even more of a, a, a legend in itself. So then I tried to be very diverse on who I selected. So um, Arabelle Thompson is a female on here. And I, I was compelled to go visit her grave, um, which is in Driscoll. And I have to go back again because of what I can, of what I've researched so far, it sounds, or I pretty much, I think that there is one brother that is not buried here. And I know there was one brother that ha had a, a disagreement with the, the father. He moved away and then he moved back. So that I have to find out for sure. So she's buried here. Um, a brother, mom and dad um, are buried here in Driscoll. So I felt that I should go visit her grave. And my students, of course, they wanted to take a field trip. <laughs> yeah, so this is Arabelle. Um, this is actually one of the students um, that worked on the wall. We took a picture of him basically spray painting. He's got a can in his hand. And then each of the students, um, and this design actually evolved because I did not have it completely completed when I submitted it, which, you know, I, I told my students I must have had a really good explanation of what I was doing because they bought, they bought into the idea. <laughs> so each student had to come up with a duck, a rubber duck, um, to show either some ethnic group or some diversity. Um, so I had one girl, she wanted to do the LGBT duck, uh, Mexican duck, West African duck, German duck, cowboy duck, there's a Hawaiian duck, a uh, military duck, and the Asian duck up there. So we tried to hit as many diverse things as we could or um, people. So that's where it all centered. And people ask why ducks. Um, you could switch to the next slide. We'll see what it is. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, Harold Schaefer is also on there. Mr. Bubbles. So that's why the ducks and the bubbles fit into the piece. <laughs> People ask, why the ducks? Well, if there's going to be a bubble bath, there has to be ducks. Um, so that's the piece. And then the other person on there is Gary Miller, a longtime artist of you know, Bismarck of North Dakota. And um, just because the students are artists, I, I felt that that was a fitting to put those three in there. And we could have put a whole list of other people on the wall, but we felt those three would fit together. Um, this goes back to as far as community. Um, it was a public relations job, basically, painting in there. I mean, I started keeping track of my hours, and I just like, I can't do this. If I keep track of all my hours, I'm probably going to drive myself crazy. I did spend 40 days on my piece, and I spent 30 days on the Bismarck High one. So I was in that alley for 70 days straight. Um, yeah, so you can see it was part of my life. And this Terry guy, Terry's homeless, and we became good friends. Um, some people he scared, but him and I were like glued at the hip. I mean, we'd walk over to McDonald's and get something. 
Um, he went into Laughing Sun, and I bought him a beer once. So um, he's always, if I'm not down there, he asks people, have you seen Paul? Have you seen Paul? So I have not seen him probably for several weeks. So, And then this, uh, this little girl came through with her family, and she wanted to paint. So we set up some cardboard, and Terry and the girl are down there painting. Okay, this just so shows some of the kids that are working. Um, the goal part is steampunk. We turned it into a steampunk um, design, so that machine is actually blowing out bubbles out of the out of the top there on the right side. So that was kind of the theme of where it came from. Okay, you can go. Oh yeah, and we also put yaw. We spelled yaw. Y-A-H, because we thought if we spell it correctly, people aren't going to get it. <laughs> so, so we spelled it Y-A-H, and then the other one says Oofda. <laughs> That's what he's painting. Okay, you can go. Okay, this was the start of mine. This was another kid that he had taken classes from me. Um, so I said, come up on the ladder, pretend you're painting. So it had fun. So... Um, I brought the painting in. This is actually the, it was based off this painting. Um, you guys, I can put it in the back so you can see it. But, um, so when I blew this up, the state, um, yeah, you can stop here. Um, when I blew this up, I actually had more border than my painting. And I thought, okay, now what I do, do I redraw this or do I just go with it? Well, it's like, you know what, I've never had, um, I've been doing a lot of paintings with borders, intricate borders like this, so I decided to, to leave it and I'll come up with all this other imagery. Yeah, it's obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, the joke, at the joke at the end, or close, are you done, are you done, or um, when you find the kitchen sink on the wall, it will be done. So, if, you, if you've been down there, there is a sink on that wall. So, so you have to find the sink. Uh, then it kind of evolved, you know, this, back to community, Andrea, her work is on the wall. She was painting, actually go back to this slide. <laughs> right here. She was actually painting next to me. Her little design is actually incorporated into my piece. Mm. And then I changed it a little. And the gal over here with the jars, there's a jar of choke cherry mm -hmm. jelly on there. So I, I kind of was influenced by the artists that were around me. Um, there's also, I actually had to go take a trip, several trips back to the Heritage Center because I was running out of imagery. How am I going to make this fit? So, I mean, I was painting and thinking and designing as I was going. Um, also, the heart, the heart is in the center of um, North Dakota, which is in Sheridan County. People ask me, why is it not in rugby? Because that's not the center of North Dakota. So, I focused on the heart and this heart is... Uh, German, that one is Norwegian up there, there's a native heart design up there, and then the Irish heart. So I kind of looked at the, the groups that are in North Dakota, um, and I really want to put more emphasis on Native American culture on this piece, just because I think this was, I don't know, as I, I can't remember the timeline now, but and then at the very end, I, I just wanted to put water over the whole thing, water bubbles. And I did that on a few spots. So another thing, too, on the right side, up where the blue is, um, I started that pillar, carried it. And then I invited three other artists. I'm a rebel <laughs> sometimes. We'll just say not a rebel, an uh, innovator. <laughs> I invited three other artists to collaborate on the pillar that, had, that were not selected as far as being part of the alley. Because I, I wanted to, they said, the committee said we could do work on a pillar next to ours if it hadn't been chosen. So I invited three other artists to collaborate on that pillar with me. So I started it, 
and then another artist came in and a second and a third artist and then I went back in and did some things to kind of blend them together so to me I, I love that piece that the four of us kind of collaborated on okay you can go on There's Andrew and I having fun. <laughs> Here, you can see the process. Is that all of them? Okay, so that's kind of the process, um, or some of the thought thinking. I hit a lot of things in this mural um, that I really usually, some people I've shared, so if you go back to it, definitely look at every single inch. <laughs> Because I include, there's actually seven, I believe, seven world religions on here, symbols, including Islam. So I, I really want to embed a lot of things into this piece. Um, I did have a pipeline on here, but I, do, I painted over it because I th too many people were saying it looked like something else, and I will probably go back in and paint it on somewhere. But it was painted in a, in a very symbolic um, place as far as the, uh, um, I'll just tell you where it was at. It was on the turtle shell right below Lawrence Welk. There is a mosquito on the wall. Oh. I actually painted a mosquito on the wall. Um, and DSU football only went on there because of UND going on there twice. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from UND. <laughs> Um, in fact, well, if you've seen the wall, the water, the water droplet, I think it's up here. It's the only part on the border that has blue on it. But there's a lot, I mean, like the top, if you compare it to my painting, the elk is not on the painting, the B-52, the NPL goat, the poppy, the flag, the rose, the ox cart, all that stuff is not on the original painting. Okay. 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 That's it. Thank well, you. I want to thank both Molly and Carl. Thank you so much. I wanted to make sure everyone knows where the art alley is. Um, 4th Street, right? It's 4th Street. Um, it's just between Maine and the block north of there on the east side of the road, right above where the Laughing Sun Brewery is, so right across from Peacock Alley, right in there. You can't miss it once you get there, but it's um, very close to Maine. Um, and finally, our closing words are by Kelly Wiseman, Ask Ruth Jackson. I send you out now to share yourself with the world. May its promise and complexity set your mind ablaze. May you hold fast to what your life has taught you. May you question everything. And when you have changed the world and the world has changed you, may you return again to this place and share what you have learned with us. Thank you. <laughs>